What is up, God Gamers? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what are the best Orn items and what are the best Orn item users. To do that, we're going to be conferring with the stats, as we always do. Uh, you know, TFT players, we love stats, right? Uh, so we're going to be conferring with the stats, but also the stats don't tell all... You know, it doesn't, it doesn't give you the whole picture because a lot of times when you look at stats, especially, you know, on the first patch, it's going to be telling you the best users on the best comps of these items. So I'm going to also try to let you know um, some other units that are going to be good users that maybe their comp isn't necessarily very strong at this moment, but on later patches, you know, play them with these items. So without, without further ado, let's get into it. And let's first up, just look at the best Orn items. Um, if you are unsure, the best Orn items by far are the first two here on the current patch, and that is Sniper's Focus and Eternal Winter. The reason why these are the best items on the patch is Eternal Winter is just the most broken item that ever invented to TFT ever, and I have no idea why it's still in the game, but it still is in the game. Uh, so Eternal Winter is just perma broken, and it doesn't even matter that most of the uh, carries in this set are auto attack based. Like, just just watch watch Lux try to kill an Eternal Winter user. Uh, she stuns herself mid cast. Uh, just just check it out. Uh, so it's not even it's not even because like things like uh, Zeri. Uh, Aphelios and stuff like that. It, it, it's good against everybody. And then Sniper's Focus is so good because all the meta carries use it. And the stats on Sniper's Focus is just amazing. I mean, just look, Aphelios, Zeri, uh, Kai'Sa, Azir, um, all use this great. Karma uses this great. Jin, the best item holder in the game, uses this thing great. Ari uses this thing amazingly. So uh, this item's just broken. And then after that, there's pretty much a huge gap between um, how good these items are. And I think all of them are fine. Like, even though you see Anima Visage have a really low uh, place rate, I played double Anima Visage last night on a Gen stall comp, first place, baby. Um, so, you know, it really just depends on the comp and the setup. Uh, all of the items can work, but if you get offered, you want to go for these first two. These first two are, are giga, giga broken. All right, now we're just going to sort by play rate, and we're going to go through each of, the, uh, each of the items. So let's start with Eternal Winter, and let's check it out. The best users of Eternal Winter are going to be your super tank. So whatever comp you're playing, the tankiest member is going to receive the item. And as we can see, play rate right here. But let's go to placement rate right here. Um, and so this doesn't tell tell the whole story. The best users are going to be Sejuani Shin. They're the premier tanks of this set. They're the best, bar none. That, those are facts. Uh, but after that, you see Maokai has a really good rating. That's because the Tristana comp is super strong, right? Um, and if you get the Tristana comp with this, I ran this last night. I ran the Tristana comp with Orin Legend and guaranteed first. Uh, I did hit my Tristana 3 pretty early, but uh, Eternal Winter had a lot to do with this. I actually put it on my Poppy because I didn't three-star my Maokai, but once I got that Eternal Winter, it was the free freeze game of my life. As you can see, it's just great on Super Tank, Sejuani, Shin. It's fine on Scion, uh, but don't think about it too hard. Just put it on your tankiest member and you're good to go. All right, let's check out the next one, which is Sniper Socus, which we talked about a little bit already, and we're going to see the placement rate um legendaries like it like just don't read too much in the legendaries because it just doesn't they're legendary units if you have these legendary units on your board you're probably going to place very highly right um so great on heimerdinger obviously senna ari um Bel belveth's kind of weird but i guess if you're running a two-star belveth you're probably doing pretty well in the game that's why it's rated pretty highly uh, but i think the more important ones to look at is tristana so good at tristana this is why this item is broken it's just so good on all the meta carries once you have the four-star tristana and she bounces her little grenade onto the back line this thing's insane very strong. Athelios has a lot of backline access. Uh, Kaisa, she just uses the stats really, 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 really well. I don't think she's actually one of the best users of this item because a lot of her damage will go onto the units right in front of her. Um, unless she, like, it's pretty much RNG. Like, if she dashes away, then it's really powerful. But sometimes she dashes into them. Like, she dashes away from enemies to dash into more enemies. And then, you know how it is. Uh, Azir is kind of the same thing. A lot of times he's hitting closest target. So I don't think it's that amazing on him. And then, uh, but, but Zeri, Aphelios, Ari, they really use this item super well. And Jin, you see down here that maybe the top four rate isn't super high, but this is because the Jin comp just isn't that strong. Um, and you really need to know your spot to play it. And you look down here, like units like Yasuo or Urgot are definitely not the folks you want to be putting this item on. Uh, but Jin, don't, don't read too much in this Jin thing. He's one of the best users. And Karma is actually great at this. I think a lot of people just don't know how to play the Invoker comp and they play it in bad spots. Reason why the stats don't look great there. Um, all right, Blacksmith's Gloves. And this one I'm really interested to see what the stats have to say because Blacksmith's Gloves is pretty random. Um, my theory is it's best on two tanks because uh, I think there's just a lot of good tank radiant items, but, or yeah, Orn items, whatever. Uh, or radiant items, we're right. Um, <laughs> but okay, so all the legendaries, don't worry about the legendaries. But Talia was interesting 
This is probably just because Talia is in the Velkaz comp. And so if you end up getting Blacksmith's Gloves and you put it on a Talia, that probably means you have a three-star Talia, um, which most likely means you have your other three stars, right? So this is why this is performing super well there. Jinx, same reason. If you're running Jinx three in like the Tristana comp, or you're running Jinx in a Piltover Zeri comp, you're probably already in a great spot. That's why it looks like that. Zeri is broken, obviously, guys. Urgot, I think, is probably like the best user, right? He's a frontliner and a damage dealer. I think he's probably the best user if you had to pick one. It's going to be him. Uh, same thing with Gwen. Same idea. She's like a frontline and a damage dealer. Uh, so I think that's great there. Uh, Nazus makes a lot of sense to me, but I just don't think he's very strong as a carry. Darius makes a lot of sense to me. I just don't think he's super strong as a carry. Um, but other than that, I think those are probably the best users. Oh, wow. Look at Zed. Look up out of this for Zed. I think the idea is if you're running Zed, you really need uh, very good items on Zed. So that's probably why. Um, <clears throat> all right. We're on Infinity Force. Very curious where this puts it. I would just assume all the meta carries are going to be the best. Es essentially, you put Infinity Force just on... It's mostly better on AD carries, I think. Uh, they, I think they just use most of the stats better. Um, but let's see, what the, let's see what the stats have to say. Um, so Tristana is the one that's interesting here. We don't really care about uh, these guys. Don't care about Viego. Viego is just a byproduct of being in Tristana's comp, right? It's Tristana that carries the comp. Um, but let's look at this. Katarina has a decent rating here with a 2% play rate. Looking at play rate is important as well. Legendary is obviously good here. It looks good on legendaries. Belveth makes a lot of sense here. Um, let's see. Callista. I feel like Callista would probably be pretty good user. Yasuo, you know, Yasuo, the stats don't look super great, but he does have a 10% play rate, so he just gets played a lot. Yasuo sounds like a really good user here. Um, let's look at some more. Zed. Yeah, Zed, because he actually needs his IE healing and plus one. Like, he needs Titans or QSS, so that's why it's probably not great on him. Um you know, there's a lot, especially frontline units. This is why I think like this is this item is definitely gonna be better on backliners. A lot of frontline units have like their items that they have to have. Um, so like that's why it doesn't make a lot of sense onto um onto Zed. Now you also it makes more sense to me because you don't have to build crit and that sort of thing. You can build more flat AD. Um, but anyways, yeah. So better on your backline carries, uh, not as good on your frontline DPSs. Except for you also, I think it's probably fine. All right, let's look at Anima Visage. This is just gonna go on your super tank guys. Look. I mean, I don't even need to, like, go through this. It's going to go on your super tanks. Don't worry about the rates here. Gwyn is interesting. Gwyn, Gwyn, pretty good stats there. Scion's great there. But, yeah, if you're playing this item, this item just doesn't have great stats at this time, so it's not going to look super great on anybody. Um, but it, it just goes on your super tank. Uh, and Gwyn sounds pretty interesting as well. Um, pretty interesting there. All right, let's uh, go back to another one. Anime Visage is the worst performing one, but I actually think it's a good item. Um, low key. Okay. Trickster's Glass, and Trickster's Glass is one that you want to put on, You, as you can see, it has the most play rate on Jarvan. It is the best on a two-star CC tank. You really want to use it on frontliners. A lot of people use it on backliners, which sometimes can make sense, like, especially if you're running, like, a Jin Deadeye comp in the early game, then, like, that makes a lot of sense because Jin one-shots, uh, if you're getting Deadeye procs, just the more Deadeye procs, the better. You know, that makes some sense. But typically, the way you want to use this item is you want to use on tanks. Because in the early game, having an extra two-star tank, like, imagine you're running, you know, Bastion front lines, and you have two two-star Maokais on your front line. That's pretty insane, right? That's like a lot of front line. Um, so that's typically how you want to use it. And then in the late game, you just want to put it onto a CC tank. And as we can see, Scion is going to be, like, the best user here. Senna, don't read too much into this. If you have a Senna two-star on your board and you put Trickster's Glass on there, you're in an amazing spot. So that's why this is up here. And she works in all the meta comps, basically. Um, Scion looking great here. Don't read too much in the Zeri. She's just the best carry here. Um, but Scion makes a lot of sense to me. Aatrox makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Heimerdinger makes a lot of sense to me because he has that CC. I don't think you get the... You don't get the extra turret, though. So I don't know. But you get the extra CC there. I think Rise could be really good if it's like Shurima and you have those double tornadoes coming up. But Urgot seems to be like one of the best users as well. I mean, he's a frontline tank DPS. Urgot, he, he's just that dude, isn't he? So Scion's great. Urgot's great. And uh, Cassante is great, of course. We see Jarvan all the way down here. But remember, Jarvan has a like 20% play rate, basically. So uh, yeah, you want to put it on a big CC tank. And in the early game, uh, just put it on your tankiest unit, typically. Uh, but there are some exceptions, like running uh, a Jin, Cotton Eye Jin. <clears throat> all right, Hole Crusher. Um, Hole Crusher is an interesting item. It has very good stats, but it just doesn't feel like it does a whole lot once it went, you know, later. But Scion is a great user of these stats, so this makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so yeah, this seems pretty good. Aatrox makes a lot of sense to me. 
Diego, again, he is just in one of the best comps, so that's why he's going to be rated highly on a lot of these lists, but makes sense to me on about Diego. Um, Sejuani here, very high play rate, so it's probably this item's probably very good on her with her, with her play rate. I mean, she's just so tanky. Her, she scales with HP. This item has a lot of HP, uh, so that sounds very good there. Shin, just a super tank. So it just goes on your super tank or your CC unit. Urgot makes a lot of sense to me as well. Uh, Yasuo, ha he can utilize the stats very well. Um, but yeah, looking pretty good here at the hole breaker. Oh, Crusher, sorry. Oh, Crusher, my bad. Death's Defiance. Death's Defiance is an item you just want to put on frontline carries, usually. Think Urgot, Yasuo, that sort of thing. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Urgot Yasuo, highest play rate. That makes a lot of sense to me. And obviously, we're going to have our legendaries there. Tristana, interesting one right there. It's because you want to build Gunblade. So if you don't get Gunblade offered, you do Death's Defiance. That makes sense to me. Zeri, same idea. Um, these are just some of the best carries in the meta. Um, and healing is very good on your backline carry because Zeri and Tristana exist in the meta and they have backline access. Scion makes a lot of sense to me. Makes so much sense to me, actually, because he gains that attack speed and... Yeah, he's on that back line. All the Juggernauts make so much sense. Yeah, Juggernauts here. But uh, I think y I think units like Yasuo and Urgot are going to be like the best users. Now, they're not necessarily performing the highest in the stats, but they have the highest play rate as well. Um, and so that's why the stats can be a little bit little bit skewed um, against them. Um, and also just legendary units always perform better and like Zeri and Tristana, they're just broken, right? But I think the best users are going to be units like Yasuo, Urgot, Scion, um, you know, Jarvan could be good just so that he gets two cast off. But typically, you know, Nazis is going to be good later. Gwyn could be good um, when it's their patches, right? Um, yeah, it's going to be best on frontline carries, but also you can just put it on, you know, a unit like Jarvan and maybe he casts twice and that's that's going to be really powerful for your team, right? All right, Gold Collector. Gold Collector is one you just don't really want to take that often unless you get it offered really early on in the game or if you're snowballing. I got a first place last night with the Tristana build. Um, and I ran, uh, I ran collector and then I had an IE later. Um, and that was really nice. And then I got healing for my augment. So it worked out perfectly. And then I got a last whisper on a, on a Senna. It was, it was nuts. It was the freest first of my life. Um, and the gold collector really helped me snowball. I hit a very early Tristana three, hit it on three, one, rolled a zero to do it. And, uh, and then this item like reclaimed my gold for me. So it's really good early game, but it's, it's not super great to take later unless you already have built Critch. Uh, if you're asking, you've already built IE. Um, they can be very nice. Oh, I didn't build IE that, IE that game. I got Jeweled Lotus, and then it really popped off. That was crazy. And so Aphelios has the highest rate here. It's very good on Aphelios because he has a lot of AoE damage. So that's nice. But same same idea Tristana. Um, you don't really want to build it on AP units. Usually, it's going to be a little bit better on AD units for the most part. As you can see, Aphelios performing pretty well here with a 20% 20 play rate. Obviously, the legendaries here. Um, Senna is an interesting one because she hits the whole board. So if you actually have a yoked Senna with this item, she can do a lot of executes. Uh, Zeri makes a lot of sense to me here. Um, Aphelios makes a lot of sense. Akshan makes a lot of sense. Urgot is a tougher one uh, to make sense for me. Uh, and as you can see, it's just not as good on the AP carries. Uh, you really would rather put on AD units. You also, it's just not an item that gives him very good stats for him. Um, he needs some other stuff going on. Zed, again, Zed has very particular itemization. So that's why even though it's crit chance, um, it doesn't seem that great on him. All right, let's go through some more. We are on Randuin's Omen, and there's really nothing to talk about with Randuin's Omen. Randuin's Omen goes on whoever whoever the fuck. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, you just make sure your tank line gets the Randuin's Omen buff. Um, a bait in the late game is trying to make sure the buff is on your whole team. Now, sometimes you can do that, and that makes sense, but most of the time, you just want to make sure the buff goes onto your tank line so you're not sandwiched in one spot so you don't get hit, by, hit with a Jarvan ult, then a Heimerdinger grenade, then, you know, all, all that good stuff. You, you guys know how it is. Um, so this item is going to be best it just goes on your tanks right but it's going to be best on bruisers so if you're running bruisers it's going to be best the reason why it's going to be best on bruisers because bruisers have a um a high amount of base hp and then you put armor on top of that it's going to be nice it's going to be least effective if you're running like a bastion front line you know you're running a lot of bastions uh because uh the way armor and mr works the more you get the more diminishing returns you get the like uh, lower values when you stack armor on top you get higher values right um so it is best on uh, stats, like raw stats, like armor and magic resist are best if you have more HP. So it's going to be better on uh, bruiser units. Um, so as we can see down here, that's why the play rate is so high on Sejuani and that sort of thing. But again, this item you just put on your tank line. Don't think too much about it. There's not much to talk about here. All righty. And we're almost through here. We're at Obsidian Cleaver. And Obsidian Cleaver um, is going to be really good on units like Ash and Senna. 
Those are going to be some of the best users, just full stop already. Lissandra is going to be another good one. Units that just have loads of AoE that guarantee hits the front line. Senna, it's insane. She shreds the entire board. Um, but if we look through here, um, it's a good item if you are already going to build Last Whisperer. Just to play on your main carry is fine as well. But as you can see here, the play rate on Zeri, Ephelio is super high. Going to be a decent item on them. But the, uh, the thing is, the item doesn't have to go on them. I think that's why their placement rate isn't super high. Because the item can go on anybody. Um, it can go on... It's so much better to just go on Senna. I can go on Heimerdinger. He has a lot of AoE. Um, so that can be nice. But, you know, if you want to put on Heimerdinger, you can just build the, shre you can just build the Shrink Ray, right? Um... It has a lot of tank stats. That's why you'll see people put on Sion and stuff like that. Sion has a lot of AoE with his cast. Aatrox makes some sense to me. Uh, but I think the best users are Senna and Ash. They're, they're just so insane with this item. Um, might not show up in the stats here, but I think they're insane with the item. And again, you can play it on your main carry if it's what you get offered. Um, and, you're, and you wanted to build a Last Whisper and you can't do it. Uh, so it can be very nice in that situation. All right, let's go back out of here. I think we got a couple more left. Deathfire's Grass. Deathfire's Grass is going to go on your AP unit. And something that's very important about Deathfire Grass that you need to understand is you need to really think about positioning your Deathfire Grass. Because Deathfire Grass makes uh, just deletes a tank, right? And so you want to make sure your Deathfire Grass is right in front of their super tank so you can just delete their tank at the beginning of the fight. And the vice versa is true. If you see a Deathfire Grass in the lobby, especially if you're in a 1v1 situation, you want to make sure your tank is not the one getting focused. So a lot of times when I'm versus a Deathfire Grass player, I'll just move my tank to the second row. I'll sacrifice one of my uh, guys I don't even have items on. They'll die immediately to the Deathfire Grasp, and then we're good to go. My tank will survive, and we'll be uh, justice will prevail, right? This is going to be great on AP units. Um, so if you're running an AP carry, it's going to be great on them. Heimerdinger, Senna, Ari. Uh, Katarina can be nice because she can just delete the tank in front of her and then start doing her backline stuff. Pretty nice there. Uh, Viego makes some sense just because of the Tristana comp. But this item's not performing super well, and I think this is really because a lot of people don't use it well. They don't put, they don't like big brain position every single round in front of their super tank. And also, just AP is not performing as well as a lot of the AD comps right now. But you know, just put it on your AP carry. Put it on. You don't doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be on your main AP carry. It does have some great stats. Uh, but just put it on whoever on your main AP carry or a side AP carry, and then just make sure you position each round to kill their super tank. And again, when you reverse it, make sure you position. Um, away from it. All right, Mana Zane is going to be best on to AP units. I imagine someone like Ari is going to be an amazing user of this. Someone who needs to get a lot of big casts off. Rise. Rise makes a lot of sense to me, especially the ones where he's a little bit stronger on. Senna makes a whole lot of sense to me. After she casts, she gets another big cast. Crazy. So I think this item is best on the legendary units. And then like Sorks as well. I don't think it's super great on Lux because she's, she's channeling for so long. Um, that I don't think it's great because then she wastes the time that she's channeling. Um, so I just don't think it's super great there. But Bellclaws makes a lot of sense to me. Sona makes a lot of sense to me. Units that have these very impactful casts and uh, and they don't spend a lot of time channeling. Jarvan makes some sense to me, but you got to make sure he can stay alive. Um, so it's a little awkward there. Um, Urgot, I guess, can be fine. Uh, but, but the key thing, it's going to be really amazing on legendary units is uh, just things that have really big impactful casts. Think Senna, Rise, Ari, Heimerdinger, and you're good to go. All right, we are down to the last one, Zhonya's Paradox. And Zhonya's Paradox is going to be great on AP units, guys. Uh, especially when you want to de-aggro or reverses like rogues. If rogues are really meta and you're playing like an Ari stall comp, then it's going to be amazing. You basically guarantee your Ari gets a third cast off as long as your tank line isn't complete dog shit. Um, okay, so obviously it's going to be great on these guys. Uh, I guess Scion could be good. I mean, it's just like his play rate is so low. It's just like if you're running two-star Scion. Scion sounds interesting to me because the AP skills his attack speed. And then like once he... He'll go Zanya's and he'll guarantee his ult and then he'll be on the back line and he de aggro. So maybe he gets two ults off. And then also, um, you know, whenever he turns into his zombie form, I think it can proc again. Uh, so that that's interesting to me there. Cassante makes a lot of sense uh, because you can pretty much guarantee he gets a second cast off. So going to be very good on legendary units. But let's look at some of the main carries in here. Callista makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Zeri doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Urgot, um, it kind of guarantees he'll get another cast off. So it makes him very, very, very tanky. Uh, Kaisa, she does jump into some nonsense a lot. You also same idea. So those guys make sense to me. Uh, but yeah, th this item's a, this item's weird to play around. It, but it's really just going to be good on units where you need to stall and they can get a really big cast off. You know, like Ari, Cassante, Scion can like I think he can double proc it. Heimerdinger, Senna. You know, like if their cast is so impactful and you want to make sure they get it off every fight. Um, then it's going to be good on those guys. But anyways, I think that is it for the items. And again, here is the placement rate. 
guys, play these first two. This is why Orn is so broken. It's because you can take Sniper's Focus and Eternal Winter. Um, if it's offered, you just play the lottery to get it. But other than that, the other items are pretty solid. And even Anima Visage, don't be afraid of it. I ran double Anima Visage. It's just very comp specific and you gotta you know go for some tank items. Um, so just be mindful of that. All of these items can work. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. Anyways, that's it for me. I love you all and I love TFT.